Hey guys, uh, today is our first live of 2021 with the young men that um, started the acceptance movement that is, I keep wanting to say backwards because it shows up backwards on <laughs> social media. So I'm going to grab them to join and we are going to talk to these two young activists who are wanting to and trying to make a difference. And it'll be interesting for you younger people um, to see what they're doing and how they are doing it and what they've accomplished so far. They also appeared on the... Um, our advocate and friend Sam Shaker, they appeared on Daily Blast Live. So you guys cannot join individually. I'm gonna I need you both to be in the same camera under your movement. Um you need to be under your movement account so I could have both of you on the screen. <laughs> I can't put both of you on the screen individually through your personals. Um which honestly if you go we want people to follow you, so Go on to your movement, and and um, then we'll go live from there. Let me see. It says unable to join. Are you guys logged on to that account? Hello. Austin, <laughs> Miles, their name are Austin and Miles Harrington, um, and they are, let me see if that's them, Oop, I'm in questions, well I'm a mess, let's see if I grab them now, hey, 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 hey. how much are you guys Separately send me requests. We are having technical difficulties. <laughs> How are you? I can't put both of you from separate accounts. They don't. <laughs> How I'm, are you doing? Not doing too bad. Hey, in there. How are you guys doing? I'm doing well. well. I'm doing well. Good, good. So, you guys, um, Austin and mm -hmm. Mike, you guys are, how old are you guys? 19? Nine, 19. Okay. And you, I'm going to let you guys, like, tell a little bit about, you know, your movement, what you did, how you started it. Because, you know, there's many young activists out there that want mm -hmm. to, you know, do more than what they're doing. And right. it's great when we have young people doing what you guys do. I know you've accomplished some things already. So mm -hmm. go ahead and, like, you know, how do you came, your movement came about? Why do you name it the acceptance what you've accomplished so far where people can follow you all that good stuff okay well how we started this is it's very it's very interesting so a lot of people went the time that we started this whole entire movement was was during the whole george floyd uh killing and everything of that nature mm -hmm. but that was not the cause of it um, because me and my brother known well before George Floyd that this stuff was going on. It's just that a lot of people, I guess, that was like the great awakening for a lot of people. But we already knew what the deal was. So when that happened, um, and we was like, it was almost like the final straw. Um, but when it happened, we said, okay, well, what can we do? And we was thinking the only way, in our opinion, in our in our way of thinking, um, is that we have to change the mindset of people, because that's the only way to, that we see fit. Because um, we can change laws, right? And we want laws to change. We can change stuff in the books. We can do all of that, but that's just throwing stuff at people. But if you can change the mindset of someone then therefore they will say, okay, when they get that book, mm -hmm. when they read that book, they will be more, uh, let's say... It will have more meaning. It will have more meaning to them, and they can actually use it and more so in their life. So with, that's the idea of acceptance classes. And the reason why this is so important is because once you change the mindset of one group of people, uh, one generation, what will happen is that the new generation that will be born by that generation, like their kids, they will be taught, you know, what um, their parents have taught them. 
and hatred goes from generation to generation. So the only way to counter that is if you teach a new generation of people how to how to not have hate. And it's very um it's very hard to say how to how to how to how can we bottle this all up into one curriculum. That's why we've been working so hard to see how we can do it. But yeah, it, that's what we have to do. We have to teach people how to not have hate. And that has to go through one generation of people. And it only takes one generation. It only takes one generation. It does not take five generations. Um, and Because the thing is, is that what would happen, like I said, you know, their people would teach their kids mm-hmm. and their kids and their kids. And a lot of people say, well, you know, it's hatred has been going on for so long and um, hatred will last forever. Hatred will not last forever. It, it's because nothing has been done. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you do not have anything to counter it, it will not happen. You know, it will just continue. Just think, I mean, let's think about it with COVID, for example. We don't have anything out right now. I mean, we have a vaccine, but we don't, we're not sure of everything that's going on. And so we don't. Counter it. But if we have, uh, that's why that's why COVID is going on and going on and going on and going on. But once we have something to counter it, then it will be, you know, dead, for example. So when we have that for um, something like acceptance and to end hatred, it will, um, we believe it will go away. Okay. I mean, that's, that's an amazing start. And like I said, I mean, I come in, I mean, at that age, I always, I didn't have everything in my generation that you guys have as far as when we have access to all these things, Mm -hmm. because I always was very innate in me to want to do good, give back, help, but again, it was harder back then, and we kind of just, they did as much as we could face-to-face, you know, as far as, like, Mm -hmm. hearing, you know, um... You know, stuff like that. I mean, everything was pretty much done, like, in person, you know. In, right. In, but what are some of, um, so your goals is to, um, you want to get this into schools, right? Yes, yes. definitely. That's the, on, that's the only way. And one of the big key factors in these acceptance classes is that this has to be a mandatory class. This cannot be an extracurriculum class. This cannot be a class that you choose, you you optional, you want to go. No, this is a class where you have to go. I mean, it's because what would happen is this. If, let's say I'm a racist individual or I, I, I'm, let's say I'm a parent. Let's just picture myself as a parent. Let's say I'm a racist individual or I'm a homophobic individual or who, whatever. Uh, what would happen is if I know that my kids can take this class, but it's optional, Mm -hmm. I would just pull my kids out. And so it wouldn't be useful because what would happen is that all the racists or homophobics or whatever it is, they would just pull their kids out. So the people that actually need the teaching would not get it. And the people that will be in the classes, most, you know, majority of them, well, where the problem, where the parents wouldn't have a problem with it. Well, we need them in a the class, right? But the people that's going to be causing the ruckus in our society is the people that won't be in the class. So that's why it cannot be optional. It cannot be a little extracurriculum class. It needs to be mandatory. And when we talk about having a prop, a prosperous society, we need to make sure that everybody. Uh, Everybody in the school system not don't just learn how to read or write or whatever, but we have something put in place to where people will view each other as equals. Because when people view as view each other as equals, what will happen is that a lot of things that you see that is messed up in our society will start to mend and fix its own self naturally. Yeah, no, I I think that's great. I I honestly do think we should have mandatory classes that. Mm-hmm. A lot of things, you know, acceptance, um, and, and you know, even teach like people how to, you know, be adults. They don't have those in schools anymore, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't remember if they did when I was younger either. To be honest with you, I don't know if they. Ever <laughs> <did>. <laughs> um, but I mean, we had like home ec and stuff. I don't know if you guys. I don't really know what they have in the schools now. But 
you know, what I, I think it's great. And um, I think that the only problem is if with making mandatory is you're going to have parents that are going to complain and they're going to be the ones that are homophobic, that yep. have some type of, you know, issues or whatever. But I don't yep. want to this i don't want my kid learning that mm-hmm. i want to teach them and, oh but the thing is like why well, have to say about this well you want your child to be bullied well you want your child to but you, you said know? but what i've seen in this society is that usually people who have such hatred in their hearts they really don't care about their child and their problems anyway no. if their child they're homophobic and their child say i'm a oh, dad i'm gay or mom i'm gay or whatever what would happen is a lot of time they'll be like oh they have such a disconnect because of that so it's almost like if you're going to disown your own child it's like no no what what has to me personally what how i see is that we are going to have backlash anything in our society that people have worked for uh and strive to get to better our society whether that was women's rights whether that was the right for black people to vote whether all of this other kinds of stuff there was always a backlash there was always a no you we don't want this this will not happen we don't want this in our society so we automatically know that we are going to get that but it's whether or not we want to fight for the cause fight for the future of the people or we want to sit here and say oh my what no are we going to get this is this going to get passed and i've come to the realization of that we're not going to get instant gratification this may not get passed in the first, in, you know, this may not happen in, in the next two to five years. This may take 20 years. This may be 30 years down the line. But the thing is, it, it, I would rather for us to take those 20 to 30 years and have something set up where in the future for years and years, hundreds of years that mm-hmm. on end for however long this earth is here, that uh, people will love one another and grow on one another rather than to not take that 20 to 30 years to have a society that's not worth anything, you know, where people hate each other. Yeah, no, honestly, I don't think it would t- it's going to take that long. I think it's mm-hmm. people that are back behind a movement and you do have plenty of people that think that those type of things should be taught and, and, and acceptance should be, you know, just like with bullying, like a, you know, a bullying program. It's like, these things don't really cost anybody a lot of money. It's basically mm-hmm, classroom. Mm-hmm. And honestly, if you do it in college, parents don't have much of a say because they're adults. Right. So, but I wanted to, that's where I wanted to ask you, what are your thoughts on having this across schools, like in all grades? <laughs> Well, how the reason, the main reason why we put it in for K through 12 instead of college is because we feel as though you are what you have been taught at a young age rather than what you have, what are you, what you're doing in your young adulthood life. So, for example, if you were raised a certain way, usually, unless you change those ways, which usually does not happen, if you was raised a certain way, you're going to behave that way as a young adult. Like, you know, that's just usually what happens. So we want to change people to have these ways of thinking at a young age so they will already have that into young adulthood and through life. And not necessarily uh, as an adult, because usually as an adult, people have their beliefs like steadfast. Like it's it's really yeah. just firm. It's it's not really it's really hard to change people's beliefs. And it's uh and, and all of that at a very, very older age. Like the more older you get, the more you it's like what you whatever you believe is like firm, you know? So that's why we are so um uh, uh advocate for K through twelve. Yeah, no, that's what I was saying. I think mm-hmm. the more you teach um, the kids, the better, because, and I'll get you guys' thoughts on it, because you're pretty much in that generation. So, um, what I know a lot of people go back and forth with the whole generational and bullying and online, and, you know, and then you have those that are activists, and you have mm-hmm. Categories, but I've heard a lot of people go back and forth where it's like, and then people get mad because they're calling out millennials or calling out generations, <laughs> calling out, and it's like you know, people have said they've seen a trend of certain age groups that are bullying or 
they they think that they're activists because they're calling people out. And I, I remember seeing mm. about, like that not being social justice because you just keep calling people mm-hmm. out. Not yeah. Um, and uh, they just they just seems to be a lot of people said or I've seen people comment, you know, um public figures, organizations and everything that a lot of bullying and hate seems to be coming from the younger um like age there's like certain age groups that people keep keep saying they see it coming so i was wondering what your thoughts on that and what if you think it's social media because everybody was on like grew up on technology in those age groups Hmm. or um how i would say is that i don't know what my perspective is on that really because how i how i view about bullying is that it's like I said, stuff is passed on. And that's one thing. Bullying has been passed on. And the thing about bullying and all of this to me is that I feel as though in this age of technology has definitely made it worse. Mm-hmm. Um, there needs to be things put in place that I think should have been put in place a long time ago. I believe certain words that um that is online should automatically be blocked within the system. And other ways of saying that same exact word should be blocked against the system. I believe that the dislike button on videos should be um, should be banned. You know, a lot of people may say, you know, no, that's taking too much. That, that's doing too much. But is there a dislike button on Instagram? No, there's not. <laughs> so it's like no, because I it when like for example on YouTube when you have a dislike button. Um, someone could have put in hard, hard work and then all of a sudden the haters come on and just troll and do all of this kinds of stuff. So I, I've, t- I'm totally, uh, sometimes I have to step back, um, from social media because sometimes it can be a lot. Um, but I've, I've, since I started this, I have grown much t- uh, tougher skin because it's almost like you become numb to certain things. You know, when somebody keeps saying the most ignorant stuff towards you mm-hmm. and it doesn't make sense at all. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you almost become numb. And I've also became more of some people I just cannot reach. Some people are just not reachable. Oh no. And I- you right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I some believe- people are just not reachable. <laughs> I believe and in I- the but I also believe not everybody is able to be rehabilitated. You're gonna run into that a lot of that and we have to accept that. And talking about activists, I want to speak on that. That's another big thing with me. I've, I, for the longest time, it was hard for me to call myself an activist. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of people would say, you know, it was really uh, hard, right? A lot of people would say, you know, why wouldn't you? You're doing this because I feel as though uh, you have to really be doing something. Like you have to. I just had I always had this vision of an activist. If you're going to be an activist, you have to really be out there in the streets. And I started to realize that more so my work of what we're doing isn't really in the streets. I'm not the type of person to where I re- I really want to protest or do that because I don't see it as that as a means of getting stuff done. Now, it does work. I'm not saying that protesting does not work. But I, I view it in the sense of I want, I want to be in someone's office. Right. And the reason why, the door right, and the reason why I said that is because if you're just protesting, which a lot of people do, um, but they need to be calling up some people and trying to get appointments to speak with people. And the reason why I said that is because if you're just protesting, people who are in power, they're just going to shut the door and they're just going to annoy you. <laughs> if you're outside protesting, they're just going to shut the door and annoy you. But if you're in, right, but if you're in their office, if they shut the door, they're trapped in the same room you you're are in. You're going to have a better conversation. And you're going to have a better conversation. So that's why I say I, I've, I come to realize that I'm not necessarily one that's going to be in the street, but I'm going to be sending some emails out. I'm going to be calling you. I'm going to be doing all of this. I'm going to be blowing up your phone, and we need to get something done. And that's just how I've been. And so, it, it like I said, it was really hard for me to, um, you know, call myself an activist and um because you know i look at some of the biggest people who are activists and i say goodness am i am i on their level (laughs) and i just but sometimes i have to say okay austin everybody is not the same everybody has their own lane um everybody does something different 
And um, that's when I started to say, okay, I am an activist, and this is what I do. Absolutely. I absolutely agree. I, You know, you guys are activists. You know, everybody thinks that they have to fit into this box. Mm -hmm. of, like, oh, there's an activist, so I have to do this and this and this and this. And then I could call myself an It's not a competition. You know, everybody does something different. There's petitions. There's street mm -hmm. work. Some people were protesting online and they don't protest offline like they said like like they think maybe like you like you don't have to say well i've been to a protest so now i'm an activist because a lot of those sometimes people go to protests but they don't do anything else mm -hmm. so i think that when you're doing a plethora of different things and work and even stuff like this all together collectively everything that comes together is activism mm-hmm raising awareness, raising money for causes, having conversations, keeping them going, getting in the offices, like you said, writing letters, doing initiatives, all those things is activism. I mean, mm -hmm, you can, mm -hmm. and you say, right. not everybody is going to be the same, like, you know, activist and, you know, the biggest one in the world and everyone's going to do, some are going to do more, some are going to do less. It does not make right. it because I, I i i stumbled with that myself like years back like should mm -hmm. i write like with everything that you do and then people don't know half of what people do offline right mm -hmm. you are you are definitely an activist and if somebody has a problem with it or whatever that's the <laughs> oh you're true you right. know what you're doing offline you know what you're doing online so you don't need mm -hmm. to explain everybody and like i'm not one to post every move that i make if i donated mm -hmm. hey i donated guess what i did today i helped <laughs> five people i helped a woman get up yeah and, and to me that's not activism when some when someone i, I hate seeing that online where you show right. i listen i was in we was in walmart, walmart. Um, it was a couple months ago, and I was, I was inside the Walmart. That's not the big Walmart, but the smaller uh, Walmart. Like it's the, the, it's not the big Walmart. It's like the neighborhood Walmart. Yeah. Neighborhood Walmart. We was in the neighborhood Walmart, and um, so it was a homeless guy, and we we saw him. He went up to us and he said he needed something. I didn't understand what he. I didn't yeah. understand what he said at first. This is the thing. And then I said, okay, I said mouse. You know, because right now, we, we, college students, you know, we don't have a whole lot of money ourselves. And I said, Mounds, you know what? It's, to me, I said, now, we are going to get money because, you know, our parents help us. You know, we're college students right now. And so I said, you know, we're going to get money. Our parents were, we're going to get money. But this guy right here, he's not guaranteed to get money. And, and, and also, he, he, he came up to me first. And when he came up to me, I knew I had probably some change in my pockets, but it was such, I guess, like a shock or whatever. And I was so used to people around me just shutting people out like that. I said, no. I said, no, I don't have any money. Um, but after maybe like two minutes, um, I started back looking for him. <laughs> I started yeah. looking for him. And the thing and, is, um, because like I said, I said this, I said, this guy right here, we're destined to get money. We're going to get money. We get, we, we, we get money every week. He's not destined to get money. So I went, I, f I was looking through the store, going down the aisle, man, where he at? Where he at? And I saw him, and I, he got, he had the stuff. I said, come here, I'll pay for your stuff. Mm -hmm. And that actually had cut us short for the week. Because yeah. that means that we didn't actually get all of the food that we needed for the week. But we said, like I said, we we, we make it through the week. So I, I got his stuff, um, and we we went to the, to the, uh, to the, um, to the uh, cash register, and we bought his stuff. And the funny thing that had happened was, he he, he when we said about everybody right, in line. when 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 Mouse had had said no, he had went to other people, and um, they were saying no, 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 no. Then when we went and paid for his stuff, then all of a sudden the same people same people. said no. All of them run up. Oh, I pay, I pay now. And I was like, no, 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 no. Don't do it now. Don't do it now to make yourself look good. No. And we weren't doing it to make ourselves look good because if we wanted to do that, we would have recorded it, posted yeah. it on Instagram. Nobody knew this. We're just now telling you. I, we didn't even tell our parents that. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, That's we, I mean Thing. people don't know what everybody does mm -hmm. outside of offline so it's like there's so much judgment on well i don't see you do this i don't say it's like you know i'm not one to post every move i make on social no. media and mm -hmm. 
when if you want to truly do like an altruistic deed or I mean I do them all the time I don't have to announce them sometimes I share them because I want people to see that humanity is still there right kind of following the footsteps so I'll share one that I see online or once in a while I'll tell like oh today you know like when I was well when we were in the subways um, I would say like you know there was a woman that had a baby and she was having a hard time going up and down the stairs I took that entire carriage with the baby in it <laughs> just like standing there going back going forward and she looked like she was terrified so I was like mm -hmm. And I have an injury to my back, but I didn't even think about that. I didn't care. I just wanted to help right. her. Because my instinct was, I want to help me Because you also have to, like, you, what you put in the universe, you get back. And if you're ever in that position, Definitely. everyone was just walking by. Mm -hmm. We're just walking by. Men will run to sit down, and they don't care if you're a pregnant woman or a woman that needs to sit. They're running to get a seat. And I think that we have to, like, do more of these things in front of people that they're seeing. Yeah, exactly. And, oh. you know, I actually read in psychology that um, people, when they see someone who are in need, if they don't see other people helping, they are less likely to help. Even if they see someone who was hurt, they are less likely to help because other people around them are not helping. So I seen that and I said, hmm, that, that kind of relates to life in a lot of ways. Um, it just, it really does. And so I feel as though when we start seeing more of a certain thing, stuff will, people will start to follow because that's what a lot mm -hmm. of people are doing. Um, so we start to see a lot of more people who act more humane, <laughs> Yeah. Um, instead of acting uh, evil <laughs> all the time, people will start to follow that lead. And yeah. so that's what I truly believe. Now, have either of you ever had um, situations online or offline where you've been bullied? Um, have, issues oh, issues I, I, not necessarily. I used to be bullied. And I would say I, not elementary school, um, middle school, and then high school, it wasn't as bad. I mean, it was just like people were talking about our weight. But then after two years of high school, we switched to online school because we were doing uh, tennis. So we were training that. And stuff but like that. On, online, we have had people who have said really nasty stuff to us. Mm -hmm. But what I do is now, I used it was a stage where if I made a if I said a political made a political statement, and I you know because I truly believe in what I say, so if I say something and someone disagree, I used to go back and forth all day long. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I mean, it was because it, it, it's draining. It's draining. They don't try to. I mean, usually I win because usually what happens is I make them look so ignorant. What happens <laughs> is they just. In the second letter, I mean, you can tell when you make somebody mad about us uh, when you're talking about politics because they'll say something, y'all going at it, you know, it seemed kind of cordial, like it seemed kind of like okay, intelligent. Then once you make them look crazy, then they go, Oh, you're this, you're that. One thing, one thing, um, <laughs> one thing, um, it was a microaggression when I was speaking to this one thing because I said something about politics and. They were saying like, "Hey, you're hey, um, basically saying like, oh, you're smart for like what I look like." I was like, "Okay, okay." <laughs> I, it, it, yeah, yeah. They find that, that, that there's like a lot of ignorance when it comes to arguments because this is why going back and forth, even with bullying or politics or hate or whatever it is, people just don't know disagree anymore. I find the problem is is that. We can write something of something that we feel and our feelings and our opinions, and people automatically like assume it's directed at them. They get defensive, they attack, they get hateful. I've had it happen to me, and we all have at some point in our lives. And it's like, but if it's not directed at you, or if you don't engage in this type of whether you're talking about racism or bullying or homophobia or whatever it is you're talking about, any form of bullying or hate. Whatever. If, it, if you don't do that, then why are you getting mad with the other group of bullies? Like, if you don't do that, then you have nothing to worry about. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and see, the thing... Oh, 
It's the same thing. It's like, why are you getting offended? Am I talking to you? No. <laughs> and the thing about politics, why people are so quickly to get heated, is because when I think about it, people treat politics like religion. People treat politics like religion. It's to me it is no thing of I'm just with this group or I'm with that group. People genuinely treat politics like religion. And it's so and that's why there's such a huge division. Right. Because there's no getting out or getting in. No. It's like I believe like this is so strong. And even with me, I've like everybody know this usually who I've talked to. I am a Bernie Sanders supporter. So I don't I'm not really all into Kamala and Biden. But I'm a Bernie Sanders supporter. But and I I I I'm in a family to where my whole family is democratic. Um, but I've I've changed myself from the old fashioned, you know, democratic way of thinking because I just don't believe like incremental change will help that our society prosper. So I've changed my viewpoints, and I I've listened to what everybody said, but I still change my viewpoints to more of very very hardcore progressive. That's just how I've been, and um, I still get backlash for with my, within my family, but I, I don't care. You know, I don't care because it, it doesn't matter to me. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's why it's, that's why it's so much division because people don't treat politics like politics. People treat politics like religion, and until that ends, and that's why I've actually almost mm -hmm. decided that I'm about to become an independent because I don't want to be tied up to one thing. Um, and I do want to run for political office, and if I run for political office, I really do believe that I can win. And whenever that time comes. But um, I, I just, I've just really been saying I believe I'm about to become an independent because I don't really, I don't really see myself voting for a conservative. I don't see that at all. Mm -hmm. I don't see that at all. But because uh, I'm a progressive, so that really don't I together. <laughs> but um, I don't see myself voting if for the people even within the all of the Democratic Party. I feel like voting. I have a very crazy way of thinking when it comes to politics so i i get what you're saying and i think a lot of more people believe it or not are are turning to independent there's a lot more independence than people think and that's mm. why they just have this two-party system some people even believe be three-party or four because mm. like people have different ways of thinking there's conservative liberals there's liberal mm -hmm. there's 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 you know everything's green uh, there's libertarian and really you know, I mean, there's so many, like, I mean, it doesn't mean that you're not, you might lean liberal, but you like to think, think independently and you don't like to necessarily, like, you might not agree what they do on one side and you might not agree with the other side either. And, mm -hmm. you, anyway. and to me, to me personally, when I think about politics is that the people that chooses the elections are not the people who are stuck in their party. It's the people who are willing to change, like the moderates, the people who are saying, okay, I'm going to vote for this person, even though I voted Republican this time, I'm going to vote Democratic this time. And the reason why I say that is because the people that never change the way they're going to vote is never going to change. So when people are saying, oh, we need people to vote for this, we need... Mm -hmm. To me, I feel like they're reaching across the aisle, sp speaking to the moderate or speaking to whoever they're, they're speaking to, to say, okay, I need you to vote for this person, not this person, or not this party like you voted last time. So to me, the people that chooses the elections, in my opinion, is not the people who vote for one particular par per um, party every single time because they're never going to change. It's the people that are willing to change, in my opinion, who are who decides the election, in, really. Yeah, no, I, all of this ties in together mm -hmm. when we just, like, I think people are so desperate for change and wanting things to change, and that they, you know, everybody tends to put all their eggs in one basket and say, like, okay, mm -hmm. this is what I mean, and, you know, anybody that I think can go into their, to the office can accomplish something good, you know, because if you can't accomplish one thing, then, like, you know, I mean, I think it's a mm -hmm. For somebody to not accomplish anything but you know like when we were going um back to when you were talking about well we we've learned and seen that they can do and and blocking and all that stuff we've learned that they could do that they just never have so now we know all the bullying harassment stalking all the stuff that you guys right. you're doing and 
can't do nothing about as far as this, this, and that. Now we know that you could do it because when it's biased and it's for you and for what you want, you've done it. But mm -hmm. but we actually are starting an initiative here at Boys Keep Out and I'm partnering with Inspiring My Generation where we're going to take on social media apps. Mm -hmm. Because we said some of the things like that, blocking certain words, not allowing certain words to be used. And when you get reported a certain amount of times, then you're banned. And yeah. Process, because if they don't do anything, this is just going to keep happening. And people yes. are not yeah. wanting to be on it. You're going to keep losing users. You're just going to, it's just going to go in the garbage. So why and when, wasn't? And when I talk about people have, listen, we like to act like, a lot of people in America love to act like the people don't have power. The people do have power. And a lot of the time is that we just don't elect the right people. We just don't elect the right people, and that's what happens. And so I almost like to think of it uh, is that sometimes the American people sometimes causes their own struggle. Because right now, if we wanted to, everybody that is in office is put there because we voted for them. They're not put there because somebody dropped from the heavens and they just landed there. No. They're put there because we voted for them. So if they don't want to implement something on the people's rights, so if they don't want to implement something on the people's behalf, that is the problem of the people because the people put them there. So if we want something to change, we need to, and really, and to me, in my opinion, a lot of American people are not political savvy. It's time that people stop waiting to the election cycle come around to look at what's going on in the political arena. It's time that people actually say, okay, I'm on YouTube, I'm on Instagram all day. Let me actually look at what's being said and what's being done. It's time that people stop going to people. Listen, let's talk about the primaries, for example. When the primaries was taking place, tell me why when in time of voting, People waited all the way until South Carolina won to, to, be, to, to decide, decide who they who they were going to vote for. It was like 70, 60 percent of undecided voters. <laughs> like, how, how long do you have to wait? I mean, it, I, I knew who I was going to vote for way, way before then. Not only that, um, you could have went into the line where people were voting at and say, OK, who are you voting for? What policy are they going to put in place? They be like, yes, uh... Right, I, uh, I, asked, a, I asked a lot of people, and that's what's so sad. It's so sad because I asked a lot of people. Like I said, I'm a Bernie Sanders supporter. So I asked a lot of people who was voting for Biden. And you know Biden won, so of course I wanted him to win over Trump. But I said, I, I spoke to a lot of people. I said, okay, you voting for Biden right now. Tell me what, t tell me at least three policies that he's going to put in place that will help you out of the situation that you are currently in right now in your life. Couldn't tell me, couldn't tell me nothing. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, what is this? And it was everybody that I went to. I said, what is this? How are you going to put people in office and you don't know what they need, what they want to implement? You cannot look at somebody and want to put somebody in office to represent you, to pass legislation on your behalf, and you don't know what they want to do. That's ridiculous. I think that that's a, <laughs> that exists a lot more than you think it does. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've actually made those comments myself. I said, I kind mm -hmm. of, like, I'm not going to speak on something if I don't know about it. Right. Because I'm not going to look ridiculous and saying, like, well, I'm just going to go along with the group. I'm just yeah. going to go with the culture, mob culture, the cancel culture, and I'm just going to say, well, uh, everybody's on this train, so let's just say, let's just go, yeah, yeah woo! <laughs> not know what we're wooing about. And it, right. But... I, I very much agree with that. I think a lot of people need to do, like, I mean, I see, like, comments and posts and people arguing, and I'm looking at the arguments, and I'm like, yeah, you know what they're talking about? Because and I, that's, and I, <laughs> like, <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know where you got that. Right. <laughs> know people need to do research rather than it's like okay it's like this is this is not my side so like right now the first week that he's been in office and some of the things that he's passed of course the other side's gonna say they don't like it and then mm -hmm. the side that likes they're gonna say they love it but it's like i find like when you have to have a conversation like i posted some facts recently on my facebook about something because i was like if you guys are just gonna say look at this one-sided and not really know what's going on with the certain things mm -hmm. a comment on it just 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 so you could say it's not your side and you don't like the person so mm -hmm. 
And a lot of people, this is what was so sad. Now, a lot of people, like I said, I'm a Bernie Sanders supporter. I've said about 50 million times <laughs> I've been on this live. <laughs> but I'm, right. So I, um, a lot of people that were voting for Biden that within my family, they said, okay, I said, why are you voting for them? And I, you know, I vote for him. I, you know, of course we want Trump out of office. But um, I said, give me another reason. Oh, he was vice president for Barack Obama. And I'm saying to myself, okay, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about policies here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, 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 no. This, this, this. I'm like, no. And then I spoke to a lot of people within the Democratic Party, and they said, well, I like Bernie Sanders, and I like what he has to say, but I'm not going to vote for him because it's not going, um, to, happen. It's not going to happen, and it, it's, it's just going to be a wasted vote. And I said, a wasted vote? I was thinking to myself that the reason why the people can't get it's not a waste of all. I feel as though this. If everybody, like I said, the people have the power. If the people get together and put somebody in office, they're going to get in office. It doesn't matter how hard someone try not to, they're going to get in office. Look at Trump. He trying as hard as he can and he gave up. So if the people say the Democratic side now, I'm going to give them their own party a shot. <laughs> <laughs> and they're saying that the, the country is not going to vote for uh, Bernie Sanders. Listen, what people got to understand is that even for someone like Biden, they said that he was a crazy radical, crazy socialist, crazy this. I mean, they're going and they would have said the same thing to, about Bernie Sanders. And the crazy thing about it now is that people don't understand that the Democratic has the House and the Senate. Imagine we would have Bernie Sanders in, in office. All of the stuff that people complain about probably most likely could be solved just in this election. I mean, it's just crazy. It's crazy. We have the House and the Senate. We have the House and the Senate. And we have somebody that want, that's in office that's only going to do incremental stuff. Anybody would have been better than Trump, okay? Let's just be real. Anybody. Anybody. <laughs> Mitt Romney would have been better than Trump. So it's, it's not about that. It's about we missed and a golden opportunity within this country. And people are hiring and people are cheering and people are doing this. No. And I, I, I'm making it right now. I'm saying this right now. In the coming years, something is going to happen financially within this country with student loan debt. It is. It's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen, but something is going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen, if there's going to be a recession or whatever the case is going to be, but something is going to happen because it's just a ticking time bomb. It is. And um, I, I've, me personally, that's why I've started getting into entrepreneurship because I, I and I'm also not going to a, um, I'm going to a four year school, but it's like way, way cheaper. I'm not going to school getting all the, getting into a lot of debt. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm not about to be struggling my whole life to pay off debt. I'm not doing that. So, but, um, it's crazy. It's crazy how the society is set up and the people have the power. I just don't believe people understand the power that we have. It's time that people open up their minds. It's time that people say, okay, I have my viewpoints and I have the way that I'm thinking. Now, let me challenge my way of thinking. Let me see if this actually makes a logical sense. It's time that people start doing some stuff. And it's time for people to stop getting the, the quit the social media mm -hmm. and actually go on Google and read about what these people are doing. <laughs> time. No, I mean, but that's the thing. That's what I was, that's what was some of what we've been talking about is that I think that social media has become almost like this, like, like some people, I've heard some people compare it to like cult. They're like, <laughs> Cultish, like everybody just jumps on a train and goes one way, and then the other half jumps on the other train and goes that way. Mm -hmm. Everybody's just clashing at the end, the end, the end, and you just have all mob and cancel culture, and it's just sad because I remember back in the day when we all first started social media, it was fun. It was connecting for mm -hmm. clarity. People were able to have conversations. You met new people. Sometimes they were crazy. Sometimes they were great. <laughs> <laughs> So I have to ask a question. When it comes to cancel culture, do a lot of people just do that for mainstream celebrities a lot of the time? Or I think it's just at this point, I don't even know if it matters. I mean, there's lots of people that like 
videoing everything now. So they even have sites that are dedicated, you know, like for racist videos. And when they see that, their people are losing everything because they're finding out who the people are. They're their jobs. You know, just the incident, I don't know if you saw about the incident that happened in New York where the woman attacked the young 14-year-old boy mm -hmm. um, in the hotel. Mm -hmm. um, I even think I, I, I don't, look, I, I don't believe in all this calling out. I believe in trying to, you know, somebody, it was a post I think I shared on Bullies Keep Out, and it was about to stop, you know, if you are woke, like truly woke, not grandstanding woke, and like not being ridiculous, they said, like the woman, the person said, like, you know, you weren't born like that. So stop throwing shade and hating on other people and stop bullying them and stop policing them because policing people is not activism. Like just sitting there until somebody you don't like says something wrong or that you don't like what they said and then you start attacking and bullying and calling them out because it's like, you know, look at your own behavior too. You're not perfect. You don't walk on water. So like, what are you like calling? Like everybody's calling each other out for like if they ate a and a piece of pizza instead of a piece of, you know, pepperoni. It's like, you know, it's like, stop with all the calling out. You know, it's enough is enough. It's like, if it's something serious, I get it. But if it's not, like, mm -hmm. oh. what I out. What I think in this society is that how I feel about people posting racist videos, trying to get people fired, doing all of this. What I think is this. It's really... It is it's important to acknowledge racism. It's important to acknowledge homophobia. But it's that that's only gonna get us so far. Because if we can't go around pointing out every little racist person and doing this, it's not gonna it's not going to solve the racist issue. I'm the type of person where I want to get to the core of the issue. Me going out and going down the street, I'm in Trump City, okay? I'm in Trump City. <laughs> I do I do DoorDash, I, I deliver people food, I done been all over. And when I tell oh, you it's some racist people where I live that don't care if I'm lynched or don't care if somebody come and beat me up, I'm telling you it's racist people. I can go down the street. And what I'm telling you is that in this society, me going down the street and going to the, going to their house and pointing out that they, that they are racist is not going to solve racism in this society. Me calling out racism, me calling out, and that's the whole thing about this whole coming together thing. Listen, this country was founded on division. This country was founded on the roots of division. And that's the thing that people need to realize. We were never united. Us, everybody in this country was never united. We have never been where everybody of every race, religion, sex, sexuality have been together and have yeah. sung on one accord. It has not been that way. If it was that way, we would, we would not have the problems that we have today. But right. people like to have this false unity. And the reason why people like to have this false unity is because when you have false unity, it makes it seem as though everything is good and you don't have to actually fix the issue because you're, you're being fake and acting like everybody's actually united when we're not. We were never united through the Obama years. We were never united in the, in the Clinton years. We were never united in any, any, any of this time. But it's time that people start stop saying, let's come together. Let's sing songs. It's time that people say, it's time that people say, hey, look at this. We're not united. We've never been united. Let's actually go uh fight towards unity uh that we never had and we have never experienced. Because if listen, if if you have a society that has truly been united. Since its existence, you can't derail that bad. I mean, that train just went off the tracks, exploded, <laughs> rolled over five times. It doesn't right. happen like that. You can't derail that bad. Yeah, no, that's that's a really good point. You know, I, you know, and what I love to see is someone so young and so passionate that actually knows what they're talking about. And I think, I mean, you have my vote when you run already. <laughs> <laughs> You already have my vote just because you actually know what you're talking about. And, and like, I, you make sense. You're describing it really, really well. I mean, you're making, you're bringing up a lot of points that, like, some of us in our head, and a lot of people don't say because they don't want to be called out. They don't want to mm -hmm. be, be attacked. And that's what's going to happen because, sadly, on social media, like I said, 
people say things and say their thoughts or opinions and however, I don't care how it comes out. If it's not, you're not tagged in it and they're not saying your name and they're not calling you out like that. Like if they're just making a generalized thing, why are you like, that's them. That, let, let them have mm-hmm. their thoughts. We all have them. So mm-hmm. it's weird. Why do you have to go onto people's stuff, make comments of them, people you don't know, take away their joy, destroy them, Try to mm-hmm. pull them up all over social media. Throw them in. The, th- go throw them in the street. Run them over. Then go back up over them. And this is what people are <laughs> right. Doing. Just take a train, run mm-hmm. over them. It's like until they're like a flat, like nothing, like, like just a pancake and just like nothing left. That's when like everybody mm-hmm. will be satisfied. And it's like, oh, and this, I want to hold everybody accountable. It's like okay, but you know what? Maybe if we start holding ourselves accountable and not so much worrying about strangers and don't know we maybe would be a little bit better because mm-hmm. we're working on ourselves and not worried mm-hmm. about crapping on other people yeah. so much yeah and I, i'm so i'm strong on people having their beliefs and speaking about it and that's what we need to be in our society where people can freely speak so we can understand one another and go by of how we can fix the issues because even it within my even it within progressives oh. i challenge progressives because when we talk about solar energy, for example, I said solar panels is not going to work. And the reason why I said solar panels is not going to work is because any of you have a football field of solar panels, it can only power 10 homes. That's not going to work, okay? So I challenge people even within uh, progressives. Now, one thing that I have found out for like a, a solar, um, I, mean, for, I mean, for energy, is that the only thing that could help would would be is um, nuclear energy. Now a lot of people have something against nuclear because it's it has like a wrap of like nuclear weapons and different other kinds of stuff like that. But really, nuclear energy is the only thing that will really work that I'm aware of because people say, okay, this is this is renewable, okay. But when you plug it in the machine that you're getting the so called renewable energy from, where do you think that machine is getting energy from if it's plugged in? It's not getting it from uh it's not getting it from the side. <laughs> I mean what I mean that's the stuff that people don't think about. I mean it's not going to work having a football field of solar panels if those solar panels can only power 10 homes. I mean right. I mean what <laughs> what's going to happen? So I'm so far into politics to where I challenge everybody. I'm not stuck to a group. That's why even I said I'm a progressive but I plan on being an independent because I just, that's just how I view stuff. I'm not because once you start to stick to one like um, silver line, you are not being able to change because you're trying to fit into this picture. Like you're trying to. So it's something that she might not that she might not agree with, but it's like, oh, I have to, I have to. Yeah, know. I have to, I have to play this role. I have to play this role because this is what people picture me as. But no, I'm open. I'm my viewpoints are always will change. Yeah, no, I think a lot of people think like that, that they just feel like they have to, whether it's family or friends or, you know, their culture or what, you know, and, you know, and this is what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't be outspoken. I am. I am mm-hmm. definitely outspoken. I have, you know, I, I, I'll speak on what, what I agree with and don't agree with as far as politics, a certain, you know, toxic behavior, certain things that I feel are, you know, this, that. Like, I mean, I think that that's, you know, everybody is entitled to, to their opinion, but mm-hmm. every personally nowadays, it's hard to say your opinion because it's like, it's hard to say any th- thought because I was in one of the rooms on call and um, a woman in there named Dr. Jackie said she had some trouble on hers because she made a statement and everybody started like, you know, taking it a certain way. She was like, okay, but not what I'm talking about, then this post isn't for you. And it's, mm-hmm. it's it's, it's, social media has made you feel like you have to, like put a like protective shield over you, and, like if you just don't agree with something or you just want to shout out and be outspoken about something, they make you feel like all of a sudden you're getting attacked and you're like, mm, I just thought about something. How will you feel if they made it on social media to where before you post something it has to be uh, approved? What will you think about something like that? I mean, and the reason people say censorship, uh, cen- um, what's the word? Censorship. Okay, um, to me, 
putting guidelines on social media is not really censorship to me because there was once upon a time there was no social media. Right. So yeah. people still communicated and people still taught all the time. Yeah, no, I think if it's eradicating hate and bullying and harassment and stalking right. on social media, I don't think that's censorship. I think it just yeah, has to not. be biased. It has to be across the board, not, oh, well, we're going to choose to take off these people because we're on this side. And we're going to let it be across the board. We're going to let everybody else do whatever the hell they want. Like, they wouldn't take down child porn because they didn't, it said it didn't violate. And then you found out it makes them money. And it's like, excuse me? Yeah. So they're okay with all this stuff, but you you took somebody off because they were on a certain political side. I was like, but that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I'm not saying mm -hmm. I did it, but I'm just saying, like, if you're going to do stuff, do it across the board. Not make people right. suffer because they can't get your attention. So that's some of the things in the initiative that we're doing that we're going to like, have we're going to have people sign it. They can comment. We're going to have a letter with it. Hopefully we're going to send. like, we don't know if it's going to create any change, but we're going to fight for it because mm -hmm. I, you know, to make sure, like if it's a certain topic and a certain subject that it's not going to be considered bullying, harassment or hate or racism, or homophobia or anything phobia, you know, mm -hmm. that's going to hurt somebody that makes sure that, you know, those can be, because this report process is garbage. It's crap. You have to wait forever. You don't even get a response half the time. Half the time, they don't do anything. It's like they don't <laughs> even count. And it's like, you know what? It's, it's just ridiculous. I mean, there's a lot of work that we have to do, but I think social media is just kind of really manipulating a lot of minds. And mm -hmm. even... And all across, I think it is. I mean, it's it's manipulating the minds. We're seeing a lot of lies, a lot of false information. We're taking all this in, and it's you know that's what we're seeing, and that's what we're learning, and uh, it's coming out in um, I, I think in a lot of negative ways in regards to acceptance and hate and and racism mm -hmm. and bullying. So I, I definitely think that some of the things we touched on. Uh, were great, and they were great topics. Um, to close it out, I do want to ask you this. What are some future plans and some goals that you have with your movie that you'd like to see happen and accomplish? One of one of the future uh, plans is really building a base. Um, yeah, base. Because you, you need sound. Um, we, we don't really know how people will have this perspective because so many people are not aware of what we're doing. So we don't know what the thousands or the millions of people will say or think about this. Um, it really needs to become a forefront of discussion. And so that's really one thing that we are striving to do. And that may take a while, it may be a short time, maybe a long time, but we're just going to take that and we're going to keep working at it. Um, right now, I'm not sure of how to all the way go by it. Um, I'm out, like I said, I'm, we're on the 19. I don't really know how to get all of the media attention and all of that around what we're doing. But we're going to just continue working and speaking to people. Yes, for because we have, actually we have, um, we talked to the producer for the Reva Morning Show, and they wanted us on the show, but we actually said, hold, like, hold it down for a second, because we want to do something in the community first, so it's been about three months, but we're going to, um, we have their phone number, but we're, so we're going to contact the producers maybe a couple weeks from now, but we want to get something done, because it's all good for you to talk all this and talk all that, but if you haven't did anything yet, what's what's the point mm -hmm. right. no that's exact that's great and that's that's a good move i think it's like you know it's not a you know you're doing amazing things you're doing good things take your time i i you know when i first started i started off slow and then you know i got some people involved and then i got media attention you know it's time think about what you want to do think about the initiatives mm -hmm. you want to about exactly where you want to go sometimes like for me i want to go in every direction because i want to save the world and right <laughs> You can't go in every direction, but you kind of try to do as much as you can. But, you know, um, it'll come. You know, it'll come when it's supposed to, and it, everything will work out and fall into place. And um, some of the things, like, I know that, I mean, we've talked about offline is, like, you know, you know, get get a website up. get Put some of your... Yeah, get a website. 
Put your initiatives on there. Put them on Instagram too. Post a lot. Put put initiatives that you're thinking about, goals, what you want to do. And, and the more and more, you know, the more and more you post and the more and more you create and the more and more things you do that mm -hmm. like a thing show that you've done, I think that you'll you'll grow as that happens. And then like, right. we're sharing it when I'm sharing it on my, on my other, you know, my personal in here and Sam, every, you know, the people that you do have behind you and that know what you're doing and then about you because you have been on Daily Blast Live and mm -hmm. now you're going to have another one and we're doing this live that people, some people will watch later, some people watch it now. Um, we put it on, you know, we upload them to YouTube so the people that subscribe to the YouTube will sometimes watch it there. So, you know, it's a process and, you know, but you're so and young. Doing amazing and one thing that I tell myself sometimes I have to tell myself this and um, I came up with this I came up with this quote that I like to follow um, because sometimes it can get hard out there because a lot of, it's, sometimes you almost have to feel like you have to be perfect to succeed so a lot of the time that I tell myself is that I say that the world is not perfect so do not try to be perfect for the people that's on it and that's what I follow by I, that's what I follow by. The world is not perfect, so do not try to be perfect for the people that's on it. If the world isn't perfect, please don't try to be perfect for the people that's on it. <laughs> we still got storms and volcanoes and everything, tornadoes, hurricanes, everything. <laughs> Absolutely true. I mean, I think you guys are going to grow. I think you guys are going to grow faster than you think. I think you're going to do amazing things. And I'm happy to know you guys. I'm happy to share and work with you guys and help in any way I can and be a part of your growth. And um, I thank you for coming on and telling everybody who you are, what you do. And it was a great conversation, very insightful. Um, I love that you guys are very knowledgeable on what you're doing and you know what you're doing and you want like you can explain what it is that you when <laughs> just step all on its own and for for young people like yourself 19 i love to see that age that age group doing the work that you're doing so keep doing it i'm behind you i support you we will talk soon um i i, I support yeah, you I support you both and everything you're doing Thank you so much thank, thank you, you. Thank All you, right. everybody, for watching, too. Bye. 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 Okay, guys, thank you for tuning in. Um, our next live will be probably in two to three weeks. Um, we try to do them once or twice a month. Um, it just depends. We like to spread them out. So we have always have great guests and, uh, thanks for tuning in and until next time on speak out and stand up.